you doing? Good evening. Okay, I am in my vegetable garden again for the second time today, although I wasn't filming earlier today. And I am going to plant my petite marigolds because I can and they're ready. And that just absolutely delights me. So getting the marigolds in, we've already got nasturtiums in. We've got a whole bunches of our vegetables for the, for the summer in. And then I planted my tomato plants maybe like three or four days ago and already they're much bigger. And that's so exciting to me. Here are the tomatoes that I planted. And I know they're super tiny. When we come on down here, look at the difference between that and this it's kind of huge but it's part of our tomato experiment so I have planted calendula plants that I started from seed uh, maybe a week or two ago everything's starting to run together I'm just planting every day at this point um, but I did want to plant calendula seeds. I have a plethora of calendula seeds, basically uh, packs and packs and packs. And so I use calendula a lot in my salves and my tinctures and stuff like that. Not my tinctures, just my salves and my medicines. I like calendula in my tea as well. And I just think it's a beautiful flower. It's a really great pollinator. Uh, and it's a beneficial as far as like keeping away pests. It's a marigold. So I'm gonna be planting that everywhere. I also have a bunch of marigold seedlings that I planted, and I have a video on how I planted these and how I got them to germinate so well. I don't know about you guys, but I have struggled in the past with getting uh, marigolds to germinate the right way, uh, or halfway successfully even, but I have found the way to do it so that it's basically 100% germination. As long as you're using good seed, uh, it, every single one that you plant should germinate. So you can check out that video. Uh, I think it's titled something like, you know, what the seed companies aren't telling you about these seeds because they don't tell you how to germinate these so well. So uh, I'm gonna plant, <laughs> I'm gonna plant these marigolds uh, all around my vegetable beds. And I'm also going to plant um, calendula seeds. Uh, but these marigolds are petite marigolds specifically for the purpose of keeping them small so that they don't overrun my uh, vegetable beds because I've planted marigolds every year uh, because marigolds are so important for the vegetable garden to keep those pests away and to bring in those beneficial insects. Uh, but the marigolds get huge and whatever they're planted around usually ends up getting a little bit smothered. So I got the petite marigolds this time and that's all that I'm planting in my vegetable garden. In my food forest over here, I've got a whole bunches of, um, of white Kilimanjaro marigolds and I've got some Cracker Jack marigolds that I planted because I just love those so much. Uh, but in the vegetable garden where I'm trying to make as much bang for my buck for these vegetable beds as I can, I want to use a, I want to create a lot of produce out of this small vegetable garden that I've got and feed my family throughout the year. So I'm going to use the small petite marigolds. I 
I am going to be planting my raspberries. I have been sitting on them for a little bit too long. They've been, um, they have been put into some dirt into a pot so that they could kind of sit for a little while. But, um, I didn't know where to put them. Like I said in some previous videos, when I ordered all the stuff for my food forest this year, I didn't know where everything was going to go. Hardly anything, actually. I knew I was going to put a bunch of trees up there, uh, but also I assumed that I was going to be planting more down here in the regular food forest. So one of the things is a lot of my other cane fruits that I've got, like my raspberries, and golden berries and yellow raspberries and Logan berries and, and um, all sorts of berries over there. Uh, one of the things about them is they're kind of a little bit more in the shade and I want to have something more in the sun and sun space around here is pretty high demand. So I didn't know exactly where I was gonna put them, but now I have the, the solution. I'm gonna take my new cane raspberries and I'm gonna put them along the fence line back here. And now I've got a elderberry right there. I've got a almond tree right here. And then I have a, another elderberry right here. And then I've got a pawpaw right here. And then I have a hazelnut right behind my woad. You can kind of see the stick sticking up right there. Um, but in between all of those, I'm going to put my raspberries because uh, I can intertwine the raspberry canes into the fence line right there and that'll kind of help prop them up so that they're not falling over and then it'll be easier to get to the berries. So uh, my kids absolutely love raspberries and to be able to go out and really just eat as many raspberries as they want is a really big deal for me because one, I know that raspberries are so expensive at the store. If I want to get the organic kind, and then if you don't get the organic kind, you know they're just laden with pesticides. And even the organic ones, I just don't feel like that's a sustainable option as much because, you know, they grow them in, I don't know, California, and then they ship them to like, you know, New York to get packaged or China to get packaged, and then they come back here. It just seems like it would, it's so much easier to just have them in your yard. You can pick them at the, the freshest time to pick them. And it's a, like a whole new berry uh, than something that you get in the grocery store when they pick them so early. So one of the main things I wanted to do with these raspberries was uh, make sure that I have a continuous harvest. So I have many over here that I have no idea what they are. I know that I tried to do the same thing when I planted those as well, but with these, I have a few bunches right here. I know that I ordered specific types that I can have a continual harvest throughout the year. So I have early, mid-season, and late-season raspberries that are going in right now. So I'm gonna get those planted. And one of the best things about raspberries is they grow like weeds. I mean, like they really, they're so easy to grow that um, it's almost silly to not grow them if you have the space and the resources to purchase the plants. So here we go. Here I am up in my, I guess what you'd call the no man's land of my food forest. I never come up here. Um, this is where most of my weeds invade because they can kind of get away with it because I just don't come up here very often. Uh, there's not like a clear path up here. And um, so I planted 
my new raspberries. So I have a, um, I have like five or six canby that I, uh, that I, the canby thornless that I planted, and then a fall gold uh, everbearing. It's very exciting because as I was planting them, I saw that there's an elderberry in my ducks pen area that is coming up that I thought that they had completely eaten and destroyed and it is doing really well. Um, it's it's large and bushy. There's a lot of shoots coming out. I'm very, very excited about that. I am nuts about elderberry. My mother-in-law likes it a lot too, so I know that we're going to get a lot of use out of these elderberry. So I planted these raspberries along the fence line right there because I want them to sucker into where the chickens are going to be held. I want them to go through the fence and hang over where the chickens are going to be held. Uh, I know that these guys are going to spread and I want that to happen. And if it doesn't happen fast enough for me, I'm going to take cuttings or I'm going to, you know, dig branches into the ground and make sure that they root and they do create more uh, quickly. And so the idea is this is also providing food for the chickens and the ducks and they're going to be able to grab those berries off the bushes and, and use that as a nutrient source. And so we love to spoil our chickens, we love to spoil our ducks, and this is just another great way to make sure that not only do we get great harvest, but they get great harvest as well. And then we also get to have a great harvest of their eggs because they are happy, healthy chickens. So uh, that is why I'm putting those there. But here I am next to my hazelnut. I planted this McDonald hazelnut earlier uh, this year and it had better not be fruiting. No, it's not fruiting, good. I was gonna say that is way too early. It is not allowed fruit yet. Um, but there's another hazelnut right here. Uh, and it is really like you can see all these leaves up it's looking really good and then I have a Webster hazelnut right here that's starting to leaf out at the top I mean it's a really tall stalk right here but hazelnuts or filiberts are uh, very rapidly growing brushy shrubs um, they're not you can't call them a tree but they do grow very tall like a tree but they are they definitely shrub out um, and so they're, they're good to use as a hedge or something like that. And so that's another reason why I planted these at the top here is because they are going to shrub out and they're gonna go over the fence line here and they're gonna end up um, dropping hazelnuts for the nut or for the chickens, which is really great. So um, I, want to, I want to be good and feed my animals as well as I feed my family um, as much as I can. I mean, I'm not gonna go make a steak for my chickens because well, that's just silly. There's what I'm planting my, planting my raspberries and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, guys. I hope you had a great day. Um, hit that like button if you can. Hit the notification bell if you really want to and you want to support this channel. And don't forget to subscribe because there's going to be great stuff coming out. Uh, have a wonderful day and stay blessed.